a great man is dead. His widow and his small children mourn him. The people he led mourn him his people and the people of all the world. They mourn John Fitzgerald Kennedy, the 35th President of the United States. Thus he looked in life, and this is the story of how he lived and how he died. Son of a financier and diplomat, a hero of World War II. Senator, author, he married the girl photographer who came to take a picture of a famous young statesman, Jacqueline Bouvier. They loved each other. They loved life. He worked hard in Congress. And in 1956, he stood before the convention of his party to name a friend. Fellow delegates, I give you the man from Libertyville, the next Democratic nominee, and our next president of the United States, Adlai E. Stevenson. His friend failed. But four years later, Mr. Kennedy himself was named. I can assure all of you here who have reposed this confidence in me that I will be worthy of your trust. We will carry the fight to the people in the fall, and we shall win. The energy and the confidence of youth was in him. He fought against odds. He debated against his opponent, Vice President Nixon, face to face. He won a slender but telling victory, first of his Roman Catholic faith to be elected president, at 43, youngest ever voted into the office. And this was his credo. And so, my fellow Americans, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. My fellow citizens of the world, ask not 
what America will do for you, but what together we can do for the freedom of man. Back to the Congress where he served, he took his program. One aim, success in space concepts unknown before his time. A man of the 20th century. office he brought the men near his own age who were dedicated to exploring the very heavens his aim the moon in Vienna mr. Kennedy confronted his country's major adversary Nikita Khrushchev of communist Russia his aim peace His faith was strong. His family ties were strong. He saw grandmother as a young man should. Daughter Caroline was a joy to her father. and he a joy to her. Then a son was born. His daddy called the little one, John John. They took an obvious pleasure in being a family. Because the president always is before the public, so is his family and their hearts. A mother and child. They lived in a big white house and had callers. Astronaut Gordon Cooper was one. President Kennedy had personal problems. A wartime back injury troubled him. Put him on a stretcher once. Again left him on crutches. He took to a rocking chair. Rocking chairs became a national fad. But ailments and the rocking chair failed to keep him from the active life. Baseball's number one fan. A Harvard man at Yale, and he never lost his humor. It might be said now that I have the best of both worlds, a Harvard education and a Yale degree. <laughs> He could be tough, too. Cuba became a crisis. Soviet Russia was installing missiles in Cuba. Maps proved it. The president signed a proclamation putting a quarantine on the Cuban island 
as long as Russia tried to develop it as a base for attack. Then, while the United States fleet went into action, he told the world, It shall be the policy of this nation to regard any nuclear missile launched from Cuba against any nation in the Western Hemisphere as an attack by the Soviet Union on the United States, requiring a full retaliatory response upon the Soviet Union. The warning was heeded. The Russians removed their missiles. Pursuing peace, he came to the United Nations. His plea eventually brought a measure of success, a first step. The weapons of war must be abolished before they abolish us. Russia, Great Britain, and the United States made a start. They agreed to a ban on atomic bomb tests. Pursuing freedom in Berlin, at the infamous wall, the president exposed himself to danger, where men seeking freedom had been shot down. At Checkpoint Charlie, everywhere people, people who saw a smiling face. Everywhere he went, crowds gathered to see the man who held a world's weight lightly on young shoulders. in Latin America, where he sought the people's cooperation for his alliance for progress. Many there were at arm's reach who could have done him harm, but he seemed to fear no evil from people. He radiated a hope, a promise, a strength fulfilled. He clasped their hands in friendship. He felt no peril. Then, on the 22nd day of November, 1963, the very paths of this man's life led him to Dallas in the state of Texas, a speaking tour. With him, Mrs. Kennedy and Vice President Johnson. Riding in the president's car was Texas Governor John Connolly. The cortege of cars was covered by protecting Secret Service agents. The president was 46 years old. He had been two years, 10 months, and two days in his high office. A rifle in a window. Then, on that day, a bullet struck. President Kennedy was hit. Governor Connolly was hit. The president was rushed to the hospital, his head cradled by his wife. It was half past noon when it happened. Thirty minutes later, life was gone. A man accused as his killer was caught. Lee Harvey Oswald, 24, ex-Marine who once wanted to be a citizen of communist Russia. Oswald denied the shooting. The rifle was traced to him. There seemed to be no motive. 48 hours later, he too was slain. A horrified television audience saw him fatally shot by a Dallas man named Jack Ruby. President Kennedy's life was gone. His body was brought back to the Capitol within hours. Vice President Johnson had taken the oath of office succeeding him and now spoke to the nation. We have suffered a loss that cannot be weighed. For me, it is a deep personal tragedy. I know that the world shares the sorrow that Mrs. Kennedy and her family bear. I will do my best 
That is all I can do. I ask for your help and God's. Unbelievably, President Kennedy was dead. Unbelievably, that vibrant life had vanished. Unbelievably. President Johnson took up the task. He saw Defense Secretary McNamara, Secretary of State Rusk, former President Eisenhower, And with his wife, he joined the multitudes, paying last respects to his fallen predecessor. <laughs> President Kennedy's coffin was born on the same caisson which carried the body of Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Leaders of a hundred nations came in tribute. With his widow and with his two brothers, they walked to the church, a gathering such as this has never been seen in America. De Gaulle of France, Prince Philip of Great Britain, Erhardt of Germany, the great among men. throngs who wept. A riderless horse stirrups backward for the fallen chieftain. To the church of his faith. Here, where widow and children may seek solace in a faith which reaches beyond the grave. Here, where all men become equal. Here, in St. Matthew's Cathedral in the city of Washington, a requiem for the repose of the soul of President Kennedy. It was a day of national mourning in his own land. It was a day when men around the world wondered how this thing so needless could have happened. Men wondered and found no answer. They could only pause in silence to mourn his passing. Thus was the life and the death of John Fitzgerald Kennedy. Light for eternity.